the sports podcast with the youngest, most daring, intrepid, gutsy, fearless host on the planet. Get ready for Jake's Takes. Here's Jake. My guest today is an NBA great. He's a four-time NBA All-Star. He made the NBA All-Rookie Team with his incredible play. He's a two-time All-NBA team member. He also won a gold medal at the 2000 Olympics. And he's also an NBA champion, winning the title with the Bucks in 2021. It's my absolute honor to welcome to Jake's Takes, Milwaukee Bucks coach, Vin Baker. What's up, coach? How you doing? Jake, all is well, man. How are you? I'm doing great. By the way, coach, thank you so much for coming on my show. It means so much to me. But on top of that, thanks so much for being so nice to me when I came to my uh, Milwaukee last month. Oh, but, my pleasure, Jake. We were happy to have you here, brother. Yeah, I know Milwaukee. They're everybody in the Bucks organization. In organization is just so nice. Um, coach yeah. Forcier is just the best. He's the absolute best. Am I right? Yeah. Chad is Chad is great. I've known Chad for a long time. He's one of my favorite people. Yeah, and everyone in the organization, uh, we we're very blessed here to have great, high character people in this organization. Um, from our management, our ownership, um, all the way to the coaches and the players, and everyone who works with the team, we're just really fortunate. And it, it, to be honest with you, Jake, I think that's part of the reason we've enjoyed so much success in the last few years. Man, anyway, you ready to talk some hoops? For sure. Let's go. So we're well into the season now, and there's lots of competition in the East. You got mm -hmm. the Celtics, the Bucks, everybody in between. But it seems that two teams have separated, and that's the mm -hmm. Celtics and the Bucks. Mm -hmm. And they're your Bucks. I yeah. mean, the crazy thing is, though, the Bucks are 19 and 7 despite having some major, major injuries this year. I mean, how huge is Chris Middleton back into the lineup, considering you guys have the currently the 18th best offense in the league? It, it's great to have him back, Jake, in, in our lineup, um, not just for his scoring, uh, but for his passing. Uh, he's one of the great, great passers. Uh, he's a His IQ is super high. Um He's just one of the best all-around players that we have in our in, in our league. And so, obviously, for us, getting him back is a huge boost to our offense, our defense, our locker room. Uh, he's a world champion. Uh, you know, he's one of our, our, our greats here. And we're very fortunate to have him back um, in, in the lineup. By the way, Coach, talk, talk to me about his vision. I mean, I feel like it's, like, underrated and people don't talk about it as much. Well, I think that what makes him so unique, Jake, in, in, in Chris's vision, he's just a, a terrific passer to begin with. But I know everyone watches Giannis, and, and, and Giannis is one of one uh, to ever play this game. Playing with Giannis is not as easy as, as, as everyone would imagine because of his unique ability and his unique talent. And Chris has found a way, uh, and Giannis has found a way to be on the same accord um, on the court with their passing, uh, their timing with lobs, their timing with pocket passes. Uh, they just have a great um, one-two punch combination, if you will. And, you know, I credit Chris's IQ and I credit Giannis's IQ and both of their, you know, abilities to be um, so great. But that's, that's one of the things Chris can do is I, I don't think there's a player, with the exception of maybe Drew Holiday, in this league that can um, be across from Giannis and, and, and play with that unique, different kind of talent. You know, what's crazy is that you, you mentioned the dunks and the alley-oops and everything, and I'm a huge fan of insane dunks, but mm -hmm. I think the craziest dunk I've ever seen was, uh, you for sure remember this, but a couple of years ago, was it a couple of years ago? I don't know. It was like a year or two um, in Madison Square Garden. Um, oh, yeah. Chris Middleton to um, to to Giannis jumped over Tim Hardaway Jr. Yeah, that was, it was one a, of the craziest things I've ever saw. 
So I'm a, I'm a big te- I've I've grown up watching tennis a little bit too. So in in that building that night was John McEnroe, and I obviously remember the dunk. But I I, I think what stood out for me more than the dunk because I see it often was John McEnroe's reaction in the front row. It was it was so funny to see how he responded. And I'm I'm sure he's seen a lot of incredible sports plays, in particular basketball, because he's a, a big Knicks fan. But watching and remembering his face when Giannis jumped completely over Hardaway, it was just crazy. It was, yeah, that was it was like Jason Terry and LeBron James all over again. It, it was. Or, or Jake, I'll, I'll do you one better. I think it was it was like that dunk that I was able to watch uh, in the Olympics in 2000 when Vince Carter uh, jumped over the young man. I had a I had a bird's eye view of that of that dunk. Oh wow, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I you mentioned um, Drew Holiday earlier, and when I mm-hmm. coached for Sear on my show, I asked him about Drew Holiday and about his like incredible on ball defense. But is he the best defensive guard in the NBA? Tell me, like, tell me straight. Yeah, so Jake, I I think Drew is the the best guard, the best defensive guard in in the league. Um, it'd be very hard to find a a, a better defender in the NBA uh, at any position. And I had the distinct honor and pleasure to play with Gary Payton, the Glove, uh, years ago in Seattle. And I, I have to tell you, like watching Drew. And playing with Gary, like he reminds me so much of Gary, uh, his ability to play and guard from one through four, point guard to power forward, and even sometimes fives, depending on who they have at the five. He's he's a little bit different than Gary in that uh, his strength, uh, he's, he's a little bit stronger. I would say Gary probably has the edge and speed, but they're both terrific, terrific defenders um their competitiveness their timing um their ability to keep fast guards in front it's just it's just unbelievable to watch when I mean if you go back to the finals when we played Phoenix and and the job that Drew did both on Devin Booker and Chris Paul I think personally was one of the reasons we had an opportunity to win a world championship he was just outstanding and those are two of the greatest players that our league has ever have ever seen has ever seen. So, yeah, Drew Holiday, in my humble opinion, um, the best guard, best guard defender in the league and and possibly the best defender all around. Wow, that's an interesting com- um, comparison. That's crazy compared to the game. Yeah. By the way, you should know, I love the Peyton family. Gary Peyton the second. He was on my show. He's so nice. Oh, he's the he's the best kid. It's, 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 he's, he's my nephew. I, I've, I've known him since he was you know, six years old playing and watching him play. So I, I watched him, babysat him for a while too. So we spent a little bit of time together when he was here in Milwaukee. Um, about five years ago, he was on the team. And then he was uh, released by the team. And it was it was not a good day for the family, um, um, the Peyton family, myself, because we're all family. And then to see him you know, do what he did in Golden State, win a world championship, and then get this contract in Portland is just really, really, it couldn't have happened to a better person. Uh, he's just a tremendous, tremendous young man. And I'm so happy for all of his accomplishments, but it, you know, good people, good things happen to good people. So I'm happy that, that he got his opportunity with Portland. Hopefully he'll get, they have a really good situation up there with uh, the young guy that they have, Simons, and obviously with Damon Lillard. Uh, with Dame, and uh, I think they're going to be really good when they get him back. Yeah, I know. By the way, I wanted to ask you. Okay, I can't. I can't not ask you about the Giannis Montrez situation going on. Like, yeah, yeah. I spoke with my friends about it, and this this was everybody. Like, everybody had a different opinion. Everybody said different things, but I thought Harold was just being a jerk. I mean, yeah. Giannis had zero intention to be disrespectful. He's just not that type of guy. And yeah. he just he came off a bad free throw shooting night, so he just wanted to put in the work, and I think that's what makes him a champ. What's your take on this? No, I agree, Jake. It was a really unfortunate incident. Uh, Giannis, if you ask around the league, certainly his teammates, but if you ask around the league, he's one of the nicest superstars that we have in our league that we've ever had in our league. He's humble. Uh, he's not trying to get into any um, 
to any beefs, uh, have any problems. He's not trying to uh, show up anybody when he's doing that after the game. He's legitimately trying to work on his game and improve in his free throw. So it was unfortunate. I think if Montrez had an opportunity to do it all over again, that it would be different. Unfortunately, it happened. Um, I think it was a black eye for both uh, Montrez, the Philadelphia 76ers, and, and certainly it didn't make Giannis feel good either. So I think the next time they see each other, this will be squashed and, and we can move past it because a lot of worse things have happened, right, in the NBA. So we'll be able to move past it. And uh, and he's been – and and we've and just – you've probably known this, Jake, from seeing it on Twitter or something else. After every arena, he does it now still. He's still going out to work on his free throws and and, and continue to improve. Hey, Coach, talk to me about the Celtics for a minute. They're rolling. They look so good. They're yeah. so deep and just have two legit stars with Tatum and Brown. But how much of a threat are the Celtics to come out of this East? I mean, they, they're they're – you know, obviously, record-wise, they are the best team in the in the NBA right now. Certainly, the best team in the East. And I think what I've been saying this the last few days, Jake, and I'll share this with you too. I think what people are missing about how good this Celtic team is. Obviously, they have Tatum, they have Brown, they've just added Mal- Malcolm Brogdon, which was a tremendous pickup. But I think what people miss is the corporate knowledge that these young men have. They're a young team. I think Jason Tatum's only twenty-four. But this team has been together for, with the exception of Brogdon, for the last five to six years. And so like us, they've got a lot of people who have played together for years. Al Horford, who was there and then he came back. And so corporate knowledge, knowing what, you know, knowing each other, um, they made it to the finals last year. So they really got a taste of, of, of almost winning it all. So they're motivated from that. They've got corporate knowledge. They've got a superstar in Jason Tatum. They've got an all-star in Jalen Brown. They've got one of the best defenders on the planet in Marcus Smart. They've got a six-man of the year candidate. They've got all the ingredients to be a championship team. And so they are to be respected, um, and they are to be um, – it's the reason they've, you know, had this great start. Um, I think and, – and I will add this too, Jake. I think – the, a little bit of the controversy at the beginning of the year that happened with their head coach. I think they're very motivated. Sometimes things like that can motivate um, teams. This team is coming off of finals appearances, so they were going to be good anyways. So I think the young coach that they have there now and the corporate knowledge, the superstars, they have all the ingredients to be a championship team, and they are to be respected in this league. So, Coach, something interesting I heard. You said superstar Tatum, all-star Brown. That's that's the thing. Everybody's been saying that. I keep disagreeing. I put them at the same caliber. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. Jalen's been doing insane things this year. His defense is spot on. Am I wrong? No, you you could be right. I, I and I will I will agree. I will say this, Jake. I think the wording of it, like all-star superstar, like. They're very close. Um, I would say Jalen, uh, Jason's probably the MVP of the team, but I do agree with you, Jake. I don't think they're as good, um, you know, as good of a team uh, without Jalen Brown as well. Like he's he's a, you know, and I you can argue he could be a superstar as well. So I don't disagree with you at all, Jake. I think he's a special, special talent. I know um, Jalen a little bit personally. He's a superstar person as well. He's a high character kid, comes from a great background, smart, um, and um, he's intentional. And so I think not only his talent, but the type of leader he is, is helping him become, helped him become the, the star player that he's become. Yeah, he's definitely a superstar person. He gave yeah. me his shoes when I was like seven. He's what yeah. a guy. Anyway. Awesome, awesome guy. Yeah. So here's a very interesting question for you. You're a coach mm-hmm. and you like you know which players are impossible to contain and game plan against. But if you had a choice between these two players, they're both very young, want to be on your team, like who would it be? Luka Doncic or John Morant? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I love Ja and I love Luca. Um, I love the things that they're doing in the league, 
if I had to start a team, you put me on the spot here, Jake. If I had to start a team, because it's very, very close, I think I would go with Luca. And I might be a prisoner of the moment because we just played Dallas. And we will, but we, if you ask, if you had asked me this question at the end of the week, because we're going to see Ja this week, I might change my mind by the end of the week, Jake, to be honest with you. But uh, I just love both of them. I, I, I love Luca's size. Um, I love his ability to pass. I think he's a relentless, relentless uh, scorer, can score on all three levels from the post. He can shoot threes. He can penetrate. Um, I think that's the one piece that Ja doesn't have. It doesn't mean that he doesn't have anything. His shooting is proved. He's the most most athletic guard we've ever seen, with the, maybe the exception of Derrick Rose. Uh, so I love both of them. I, but I think Luca's ability to play, to, to score on the three levels, and that one level being the post, I think sep- for me anyway, separates him, gives him a bit of an edge over Ja. So last question, Coach. You ready? Yep. So Shea Gilders Alexander is having the most insane year right now. Like, wow. There was tons of, like, trade talk and, like, on how the Raptors were trying to get him before the season and whatever. And I'm not saying that was true, but bottom line is it's not going to happen now, is it? I mean, <laughs> he's having an insane season. He's averaging 31, 9, and 8, and 6. How, wh- wh- like, what? He came out here this season and just balled out. You think that would be, like, even, there's no way they're trading him, am I wrong? I don't. I don't think so. I, I haven't. I don't have any intel on that, Jake. And I would say that, given the fact that they're going to get their their rookie back, um, Chet Holmgren, next year, they've got some really good young talent in Oklahoma City. And if they can just hold on for this kid Holmgren, Holmgren to come next year, you know, they could be thinking about getting into that eighth, seventh, sixth seed play in. They 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 they're very competitive, and with Shea Gilgis Alexander, uh, he's a super he's a star now uh, in this league, and he's he's to be accounted for every night. And when you have a he's a go to player, so when you have a go to player, and and that's averaging thirty one points a game, now you just have to get the pieces around him. So I I a find it hard to believe that Oklahoma City would trade uh, a, a a guy who's averaging thirty one, and when in the future, in the near future, this team could very well be back in the mix in the Western Conference um, with with Holmgren coming back next year. So I don't think they will. It might have been conversations early. This is how this happens all the time in this league, Jake. But once a guy starts doing that, I'm, I'm sure they're not even picking up any calls regarding uh, Shea Gilgers, Alexander. Coach, this has been just an absolute incredible experience talking hoops with you. Did you enjoy your time with me today? I did, Jake. We got to do it again, man. Let's let's do it. This is a long season, and I know your your wheels are going to be turning every day. So don't hesitate to to pick up and, and call my phone. I know it took a while, but I had a blast, Jake. You're you're doing a great job, man. Keep up the great work. I'm going to be here to support you and um, root you on, man. You're doing an awesome job. Thanks for having me on.